This presentation sets out to address several questions we frequently come across. Although mostly are related to new data center builds with the introduction of higher duty chipsets, there is a need to deal with legacy data centers. Questions like Can your cold logic solution really help extend the life of our existing data center and how does it do so? Will it allow us to introduce higher densities within racks in conjunction with our old white space cooling technology and the existing mechanical cooling? Can it really help to reduce our energy consumption at the same time as we increase our computing power? Oh, and how complex is it going to be? We will address these questions and many more, but first we need to get across one simple fact about data center cooling. The chosen cooling technology has the greatest influence on the future life cycle of any data center. It defines the data center's capacity and future flexibility. Preventing data centers being able to cope with ever-increasing heat load densities which prevents future expansion. At the same time, they waste huge amounts of energy, in turn increasing CO2 emissions, whilst depleting valuable drinking water. Not to mention the negative effect to bottom line. So what can be done to change this outcome? To answer this, we are going to initially focus on a multi-tenant co-location data hall, with many diverse customer challenges facing the facility owners. This 2D drawing layout represents a typical mixed MTDC space using perimeter, air conditioning, and a mixture of low and high density areas divided up by security cages. Typically, these halls must accommodate multiple customers with their current and future needs, while integrating constantly evolving IT technology. The combined load of the data center hall is fixed at 670 kilowatts, with N plus 1 redundancy. So, what could a cold logic MTDC hall look like if you started afresh? Let us start by removing the perimeter cooling. You will see we have a larger footprint to work with, or simply use a smaller room and save costs. Secondly, cold logic rear door coolers do not require raised flooring. Again, let's remove this from the room and save yet more capital expenditure. In the first customer zone, each client is allowed a maximum 3 kilowatt duty per rack, which means most of the racks are only partially filled with IT equipment. Now the options for a cold logic layout are numerous, so we will just deal with a couple of examples. The first thing to note is that by removing perimeter, cooling the racks can be two tiles closer to the wall, allowing more racks to be deployed. In fact, in this model, a minimum of 24 more racks could be deployed in the same footprint. In most other data center layouts, it would be considerably more. Because the kilowatt density is so low in zone one, we can deploy just one rear door cooler or one rear door cooler per three racks. In fact, in this model, the facility manager could allow each client to increase the load to six kilowatt per rack. We cover in more detail the deployment of RDC to every second or third rack later in this presentation. Alternatively, because the clients do not require any more than six kilowatt in total, then the facility operator could reduce the number of racks in this zone. So each client would now have one rack instead of two providing 50% more usable real estate. Zone 2 has the same number of racks but caged off for one client's use. And this client is restricted to a low density of up to 5 kilowatts per rack. With cold logic RDC, the number of racks required for the same overall performance could be reduced by 75%. However, for this example, let's assume only a 50% rack reduction, deploying an RDC to every second rack, meaning that each rack can operate at 10 kilowatts each, and again with this configuration each client could increase each rack duty to 15 kilowatts. Here in zones 3 and 5 there are two groups of 8 racks. Both zones are kilowatt duty restricted due to the high density racks position in the center of the hall. We could comfortably reduce the 8 racks in zone 3 down to just one rack and RDC. But for the benefit of this exercise, we will only have the number of racks and fit to RDC. As mentioned earlier, zone 4 is the high density area and allows for up to 20 kilowatt per rack. And because perimeter cooling was not meant to handle these types of loads, you will note how one row of racks have been removed, which allows for many more high density air vent tiles to be fitted. This coupled with the removal of every other rack, wasting yet more valuable real estate allows the cooling technology to meet the demand. The cold logic RDC solution removes the need for aisle containment, gives back the wasted real estate, 
and in this example would allow you to reduce the 7 racks down to 1 rack in our DC. However, we will assume this level of high performance computing is not required. So we will reduce the 7 space to part racks down to 4 racks with 4 rear door coolers. This allows the client plenty more room for future growth. The important point to highlight is the fact that cold logic allows for total flexibility of deployment within the DC. No longer do you need to have restricted duty racks around a high density zone. You can lay out the racks the best way that suits you and your customers. As mentioned earlier, these low density racks in zone 5 can now be increased in density and reduced in footprint. We will do the same as we did in zone 3 and half the number needed. Here in zone 6, we have another compromised low duty zone. Once again, this is owing to the higher duty aisle containment area on the same row. Once more, we will reduce the number by half, but as demonstrated, this could easily be reduced further. This final group of racks are enclosed in a fixed aisle containment setup, enabling higher duty of 8 kilowatt per rack. But the commitment to aisle containment and its restrictive nature is highlighted again. A critical difference is that cold logic RDC allow an expansion one at a time if necessary, rather than the full commitment. In this case, a 28 rack pod. The irony being that many pods installed have racks which are fully blanked up, or worse still rack sized infill panels, waiting for racks to be installed. So, installed a cold logic way, zone 7 could be reduced to 8 racks each at 28 kilowatt, down from 28 racks. By design, cold logic RDC are an open architecture approach to data centers, allowing deployment on a pay as you go basis consuming energy only as, and when clients are occupying the real estate. It is also worth noting all racks without an RDC can be upgraded as and when needed. In fact, the RDC can be removed from one rack and then fitted onto another. Flexibility other cooling solutions cannot provide. No aisle containment roof, no end of aisle containment doors. There are no hot aisle, cold aisle scenarios. The room is set to one temperature, plug and play. So now when we look at the MTDC space as a whole, the cold logic RDC solution has given back more than 60% floor space, and then there is the first layer of energy savings. At this stage, we will only concentrate on energy being consumed as a comparison between the white space technologies. In other words, the respective power draw to remove the heat from the data center space. For now, we will not include the massive energy savings made via free cooling. Let's start by looking at a few of the individual customer zones. In the first zone, we reduced the number of racks from 24 down to 12 and deployed an RDC to every third rack. The power draw to cool the 12 racks with a total load of 72 kilowatt is 1.208 kilowatt. This is down from the original 14 kilowatt used by perimeter cooling technology. This represents a drop of 93% energy used to cool the same space. Similarly, in Zone 2, we reduced the number of racks from 24 down to 12, but this time we deployed a rear door cooler to every second rack catering for the high rack kilowatt density. The total cold logic power draw this time to cool the 12 racks with a total load of 120 kilowatt is 2.6 kilowatt, representing a drop of 88% from the original 22 kilowatt used by perimeter room cooling. And finally, in Zone 7, we reduced the number of racks from 28 down to 8 and deployed an RDC to every rack. The total cold logic power draw this time to cool a total load of 224 kilowatt is 6 kilowatt, representing a drop of 85% from the original 40 kilowatt used. We have shown the dramatic effect cold logic RDC have on multi tenant data hall, but how would a cold logic solution look in a conventional layout? Again, this 2D design layout is based on traditional perimeter cooling in a hot, aisle cold aisle configuration. The hall has a total load of 700 kW with N plus 1 redundancy and a total power draw of 91 kW. By deploying our latest high performance cooling RDC, we could reduce 232 racks down to just 4. Whilst this is impressive, supercomputing to this level is not mainstream and unlikely to be needed for most data centers being built today. So for this cold logic example, we will use a lower duty RDC model. By deploying an RDC to each rack, all the use space can be fully utilized, and in doing so, we can reduce the number of racks from 232 to just 36, 
an impressive 86% real estate reduction. Using the same water supply parameters as traditional data center cooling, each rack would now house 22 kilowatts of IT load with the same N plus 1 redundancy. But instead of 91 kilowatt power draw, the cold logic RDC only use a total 8.7 kilowatt, which represents over 90% energy saving. Furthermore, each RDC would allow each rack to increase by another 50% additional load, taking it to 33 kilowatt per rack. Future-proofing the data center for higher duty chipsets due to arrive within the next five years.